Tansi, I'm Renai Morriso. When Aboriginal people speak at gathering, ceremony and prayer, many of us say, Nanas kum tanawau, kakio nuwakum maganak. It means all my relations, and we use it to show respect to past generations and for those yet to come. So welcome back. To all my relations. This is a third of a four-part series that has been produced by, for, and about Native people in Canada. This week we're going to investigate some of our problems and probe our cultural conscience. But first, we want to celebrate the life and achievements of a truly special person. She's Edith Josie, a Gwich'in elder who lives north of the Arctic Circle in the Yukon settlement of Old Crow. Our storyteller is Carla Robinson, a Heisla and Helsick. She traveled to Old Crow and spent time with Edith, a woman who has been fascinating readers in Canada and around the world with her view of Arctic life for the past three decades. Here are the news from Old Crow. Old Crow is starting to get warm and the spring is here around the corner, so nice to have a good warm weather. 130 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, alongside the Porcupine River, is the tiny Gwich'in village of Old Crow. Here, for the last 36 years, Miss Edith Josie has written the news. If you're looking to define the term salt of the earth, you couldn't find a better example. So Georgie Moses, he was going to Dawson City for dog race, from, from Dawson to Eagle. Hope he do very well and wish he win the dog race. When people think of Old Crow, they usually think of Edith Josie. She is a mirror on the day-to-day -day life of the far north. First run in 1962 by the White Horse Star, her column has been periodically picked up by native and non-native newspapers across North America. Well, when I first started writing news, I really glad to write for the people what they're doing like getting wood and hunting. Well, after I started writing news, more and more people just go in the bush with the kids and show the kids how the culture is going. People really give me strength and happy. That's how i really glad to write news from all crowds. At 76, Edith only sends a column every two or three weeks to Whitehorse now. She used to do it weekly and sends it from Old Crow by plane. When it arrives in Whitehorse, it runs in the paper without any editing. You know, the grammar might not be perfect and maybe the spelling isn't perfect. And I think that keeps them reading thinking, gee, you know, why, why did they put this in here? And then maybe the next week, it's the same kind of thing again, you know? With these people, they don't edit this column. <laughs> I don't know of any other paper that has any writer like Edith. You know, I mean, maybe there is, but I've never seen it, so... Yeah, she's very unique. Services at her church are held in English. And Kuchen, Edith is one of the handful of people in Old Crow who've lived a traditional life. Most of the other elders have passed away. Edith tries to do what she can to keep her heritage alive. It's not like all the way back, 1940, when I first come, the house service, the church, that small church that just full. She's good person. She makes everybody laugh. Sometimes she tells a story and she makes us laugh. <laughs> she used to, she, she sing that I'm after his husband. She jealous me. <laughs> Compared to many elders, Edith has a tiny family. She had three children, but lost one of her sons. Her daughter and son now both live close to her, and her grandchildren are the center of her universe. It troubles her, though, that they spend so much time in front of the TV. Well, like way back uh, when parents go hunting or fishing, they take their family out in the bush, now they do that would be good, but they just watch TV day and night. 
and how could the kids learn about their own culture? But Edith also sees the importance of learning the new ways too. That and always wanting to be where the action is keeps her coming back to the Yukon College campus that opened in Old Crow five years ago. This year she's working on her grade five, six and seven math with the occasional help from her daughter. <laughs> still, like, uh, I work with it two years now, but still, like, that percent, I can figure it out. There's no real science to it. The material from her column comes from the gossip and little things that she hears about town. We thought this is better than working. Just by going visiting, and if people go out trapping and hunting, she go and visit, and that's how she gathered her news. Edith's careful documenting of the changes she has seen over the years won her the Order of Canada for her journalism recently. But she's an activist too. Last year, she toured North America to save the Porcupine River caribou. She put old crow on the map because we were so isolated. And, and uh, you know, I have big respect for her, and that's how far back I know. And now today, when I travel across Canada, anywhere I go, as soon as they know I'm from Old Crow, they ask me if I know Edith Josie. Edith's unusual choice of career has set her apart, despite or maybe because of all the attention Edith receives from the outside world, she often feels alone in her community. Hardly nobody visit me here, and even that I don't, don't feel nothing. I just feel happy because I always say prayer, and so I think to myself that God is always with me. The White Horse Star says they will always run Edith's column as long as she can write it. Edith is sure she'll never run out of things to say. And I just want to write about the people, what, how they make their living and how old crow is coming out. I just want to write about that, keep going. For all my relations, I'm Carla Robinson.